All right, now, so I'm uh, very happy to be here at ICTS. Uh, again, uh, it's always a pleasure to come to this campus uh, free of uh, all pollution, which uh, all big Indian uh, cities have. So it's secluded and you don't have to go out at all. And uh, I was just saying that I am grateful to the organizers, uh, uh, Gurmeet Kaur, Pooja Singla, and Manoj Yadav to have given me this opportunity to speak on a topic which I really like a lot. It is a foundational topic about groups and representations. But, uh, you know, there is always a bit of a dilemma that uh, even though it is foundational, it needs uh, some background. And uh, it's not totally clear if I will be able to take you all along in three lectures to begin from the beginning and uh, to lead you on to what the subject is really about, but uh, anyway, every, everyone gives you a try. So the title of my lecture is, is Introduction to Dalin Rustic Theory, a Utilitarian Point of View. So which means that uh, I am not going to talk too much about theory, but rather uh, I think it also says based on examples. So I will I speak about uh, some general idea of what the subject is about and uh, give you some introduction. So uh, <clears throat> maybe as a general introduction to the subject, uh, uh, recall <clears throat> one of the uh, most uh, basic uh, uh, representations considered for groups, for groups. So, um, of course, uh, symmetric group is certainly the most important group and its representations have been well studied. I cannot say it is very elementary to study them all, but uh, a lot has been said and it's difficult to say more. Anybody who studies representation theory of symmetric group knows that uh, it's a well-trodden subject, but there are still many things which one can do. So this is one, but uh, I think this may be, uh, this is certainly 19th century. And uh, so, so to say, the other groups which are, uh, which start, to be studied is these uh, finite groups, uh, GL2 of FQ. So these are two by two matrices over finite field with Q elements. And uh, I think this is due to Frobenius. Due to Frobenius. <clears throat> Around the turn of uh, 20th century. of 20th century. So uh, once again, it's a very old subject. And uh, uh, the groups are, uh, of course, very old. And uh, so here, uh, you know, whenever one studies uh, groups and representations, uh, you know, one makes what is called a character table. So here uh, one writes uh, in this way, conjugacy classes, conjugacy classes, and uh, in this part, uh, representations, irreversible representations. And then one makes a table of them, and uh, there are certain things which are obvious. Uh, there is uh, the trivial representation and there is the trivial conjugacy class. So this one has value one, so it begins there. And uh, somehow for the trivial representation, each of them is one. So somehow this much, this is not too bad. And uh, on the trivial conjugacy class, uh, this is, uh, so to say, dimension of cut. So, um, 
to fill up the character table is what uh, one way of thinking about representation theory. You want to understand all conjugacy classes in group, and there are as many irreducible representations of a finite group as number of conjugacy classes. So one gets a square matrix, and the question is to enumerate the conjugacy classes and independently construct all irreducible representations and fill up this diagram. And then there are the sure orthogonality relations, which say that you know rows and columns are uh, um, they form some orthogonal matrix. And uh, now, uh, what one is uh, trying to do here is to explicate this character table for this group for the moment, and then for more complicated groups. And I begin here. So as I said, uh, there is the trivial representation. Uh, so I already get a bit confused. So this is the trivial representation. And then there are the other representations. So uh, let us give the dimension. There is q minus 1, q, and q plus 1. So in some sense, uh, uh, this is one of the important informations about representations of GL2 FQ that uh, they are dimensions. So there are one dimensional representations or the trivial representation which has dimension one. Then there is a Q minus one dimensional, there is a Q dimensional, and there is a Q plus one dimensional representation. And this accounts for all the type of irreducible representations. And uh, 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 their values on each conjugacy classes can be explicitly described. So uh, let me just uh, write it. Dimension of uh, irreducible representation of GL2 FQ uh, is one of one q minus one q and q plus one. Uh, this one is the, of course the trivial representation or a character. So chi composed with determinant. So uh, GL two FQ has the determinant mapping to FQ star. The determinant mapping, and if you are given a character chi here to C star then this constructs you a one-dimensional representation, and these are all the one-dimensional representations. So this is not a mystery. And associated to this one, there is a Q-dimensional representation in some generality. These are called the Steinberg representation. Steinberg representation. So the thing is that, uh, the group GL2 FQ operates on projective line P1 FQ by either linear fractional transformations or by whatever other ways that you know about. Uh, in some ways, this is a group G, and uh, in our language, this is a G mod B, and G operates on G mod B. And therefore, it also operates on functions on G mod B. And uh, order of G mod B or P1 FQ is Q plus 1. So that gives you a Q plus 1 dimensional representation. But in this Q plus 1 dimensional representation, there is the constants. And if you divide by the constants, then that is what is called the Steinberg representation. And that has dimension Q. So 1 and Q are very easy. And then there is this Q plus 1, which is, this is called the principal series. Principal series representation. Principal series representations. So the way these are constructed is that I already said that there is the Borel subgroup. This is uh, 0 star. This is a subgroup of GL2 FQ. And this subgroup has uh, uh, index q plus 1. And uh, what one can do is to look at a, a character chi 
from this Borel subgroup. So, you know, these Borels have entries in FQ, and we take uh, to C star, and uh, one can see that any character on this Borel is a pair of a character on this entry and that entry. So this, this chi, in fact, is a pair of two characters, alpha, beta. You know, one on this, so this uh, alpha, beta on, uh, let's call it A, B, 0, D, is given by alpha A beta D. So this is a character on this Borel subgroup. And uh, there is uh, one of the standard things in representation theory is called induced representations, induction, induction. So given any subgroup, in this case the Borel subgroup B, to GL2FQ, and you have uh, BFQ, and a character chi. So given this character chi, you can do the induction, and the induced representation is a natural way to construct representations of a bigger group from a representation of a smaller group, in this case from a character of the Borel, and its dimension is just the index of this, so dimension of this is equal to q plus 1. So one constructs these principal series representations of dimension q plus 1. And uh, the fact, uh, so quite elementary fact, fact is that uh, if uh, alpha is not equal to beta, so these are two characters on fq star, then uh, this uh, representation, call it principal series alpha beta is reversible. So if the characters alpha and beta are distinct characters, then the induced representation is dimension q plus 1 and uh, irreversible. So let's say this. So in fact, uh, alpha if and only if if and only if, and uh, fact B is that uh, if they are equal, then one can just scale it out to make it trivial, and then uh, principal series 1 comma 1, 1 comma 1 is uh, uh, induction of the trivial representation of the Borel, which is just functions on G mod B, which is 1 plus Steinberg. So, no, if the characters are distinct, then it is irreducible, and if they are not distinct, then it is one-dimensional plus Steinberg, or a twist thereof. And uh, this construction gives you hold of uh, most of the entry in this table, except that this Q minus one-dimensional representation is, uh, is still a bit of a mystery from this point of view. So, uh, the general uh, constructions in the subject uh, uh, are of this kind. You try to somehow induce from simpler subgroups and hope that it gives rise to representations of the bigger group which are irreducible. And uh, th this point of view works very well for uh, most of the representations, but it misses out some. And in some sense, what it misses out are, in fact, the key objects, which, uh, which are uh, somehow not amenable to this point of view. So there are uh, basic building blocks of representation theory, which are either called discrete series representations or cuspidal representations. So they have two names. So the representations of dimension of dimension equal to q minus 1 are not easy to construct, not easy to construct even now. There is no simple way to construct. And uh, these uh, have uh, a name, so one should also know these are the so-called so -called discrete series representations, discrete series representations. Or, or cuspidal representations.
and uh, this uh, needs a fundamental new idea. And then uh, typically how the subjects say is that if you have understood cuspidal or discrete series representations for all subgroups of a group, then it allows you to understand everything. So these are like uh, atoms for the subject of representation theory. Everything else is built from these discrete series. But these discrete series were already known to uh, uh, Frobenius uh, at the turn of the last century. And uh, by some ad hoc process, one can come up with the character table by some ad hoc process. And in some ways, even now, uh, it's, uh, as I said, not trivial how to construct these. But uh, uh, anyway, they get constructed. So roughly, this is what the, the representation theory of GL2 FQ looks like. Trivial, Steinberg, principal series. And then there is the missing link of cuspidal. And uh, uh, roughly speaking, what uh, there are various ways to make analogy. And uh, uh, OK, so re representations of uh, G are somehow related, are closely related, are closely related to characters on tori, characters on tori in G. So uh, this is something which I will have to, uh, mm, I don't think I can define it too precisely for somebody who is too outside the subject. But uh, one way to learn a subject is to make an analogy and then say that something similar happens. And uh, in group theory, of course, uh, people in finite groups uh, may not be too happy thinking about real numbers. But uh, there is a point of view that uh, there is not much difference in certain matters between real numbers, periodic numbers, finite, uh, complex numbers. They are all numbers. And uh, if you have understood a concept in one of them, then it allows you also to make educated guesses for similar concept for other number systems. And for GL2R, which is a very classical object, uh, people know that there are two kinds of tori. One is T1, T2. So this is one torus, let's call it T1, inside this, where uh, T1 and T2 are real numbers. But then there is another kind of a torus, which is, uh, uh, which is, in fact, what people usually call a torus, cos theta, sin theta, minus sin theta, cos theta, is contained inside GL2R or even SL2R. So uh, they are both uh, called tori. Uh, mm, but uh, what, what is a general torus, I may or may not be able to define very precisely. But uh, anyway, the point is that they are tori, which the, these kind of tori are called split torus. They are uh, somehow, their eigenvalues are in the same base field, real numbers. Or uh, for GL2, FQ, these are the diagonal torus. So uh, this torus T1 is equal to uh, T1 comma T2 on the diagonal inside uh, GL2 FQ. And uh, there is an analog of this. Uh, uh, this is a compact torus, and uh, everything is compact for finite groups. But there is a sense in which they are called compact tori or anisotropic tori. And uh, what happens is that uh, this field FQ star square sits inside. GL2 FQ. I think uh, uh, same formulas as cos theta, sin theta, minus sin theta, cos theta allow you to embed FQ square star inside GL2 FQ. 
And uh, uh, the, this is also a torus in a sense that this is a torus. And uh, what one, uh, the general uh, subject does is to associate two characters of this torus, which is the principal series, also characters of this torus, a discrete series. So if you are given, um, uh, so if you are given a character chi from fq square star to c star, then one constructs discrete series ds chi. ds chi, a, an irreducible representation of gl2 fq of dimension equals q minus 1 now. So the general feature is that certain signs have changed. Q plus 1 has become a Q minus 1. And, uh, and uh, there is uh, this representation, which is uh, somehow in many ways looks very similar to the principal series. But uh, in many ways, it's also mysterious because you cannot construct it. And uh, what the linguistic theory does is to do this in greater generality. All right, so this is, uh, uh, this is uh, the theory for GL2 FQ. <laughs> and uh, there is a very analogous theory for GL and FQ. So, so, <clears throat> there is very analogous theory for GL and FQ. DS is for discrete series, and chi is that character from FQ square star to C star, and uh, uh, as I said, it's an irreducible representation. And just like there was this condition that alpha is not equal to beta, then only these are irreducible. So here also this is defined for all characters, but one says that this is irreducible if and only if something happens. So there is a small condition to be put, uh, which is that uh, on FQ square star, there is the Galois group of FQ square over FQ operates on FQ square star because it operates on the field and non-zero elements and uh, irreducible representation if and only if. Uh, so uh, call this Galois group, it's a group of order two generated by sigma if and only if chi sigma is not equal to chi. So it is exactly the same conditions that alpha beta is not equal to beta alpha. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, please feel free to interrupt because uh, in some ways it's a large subject and uh, maybe by um, participating a little bit by questioning, uh, I may be able to give you some more hints on what's going on. Okay, so there is an analogous theory for GL and FQ, uh, and this is uh, due to Green, due to the Green from uh, 1950s. But somehow uh, the subject was a little stuck there. Uh, this work on GL and FQ was well understood. It is from 50s. And uh, then I think the only case which was uh, somehow understood was SP4 FQ. Uh, this is due to Bhama Srinivasan. Bhama Srinivasan. And uh, she is famous for having discovered one particular representation which uh, bears the name theta 10. So, you know, as I said, 
the job of a representation theorist is to enumerate all the irreversible representations. And in her enumeration, there was a number 10, 10th representation, and this is called theta 10, because in her paper it was theta 10. And uh, this is one of the important discoveries she made. And uh, this is from 1965 around. And uh, then uh, Dalin Lustig. They did, uh, so this is uh, around 1975 and uh, for all groups. So it is quite a leap forward and uh, somehow uh, the lean Lustig uh, theory is for all groups, but it doesn't do all things about all groups. It does almost all things about all groups. And uh, then there are many details which are quite difficult, and uh, the subject has been still going through some of it, although it is mostly done. And uh, so, uh, almost all representation for all groups, let's say, all representations for all groups. No, all groups, G, F, Q. And um, so he does all representations, all groups. So uh, of course, this is far beyond the scope of this program or my knowledge, but the linguistic theory is uh, in many ways much simpler and uh, it has been uh, of great uh, interest for many people. Okay, so uh, yeah, so uh, how are we do doing with time? Uh, maybe we will go up to 10 5. It started at 9 25. Okay. 10 5. Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, what I should maybe do is, uh, you know, there is this uh, catchphrase called philosophy of cus forms. Uh, so, somehow it may appear that uh, somebody quite outsider to the subject has. Uh, uh, done something to take away some of the credits uh, from this subject. Philosophy of cusp forms is uh, a, a philosophy which has been around for a longer time. This is uh, originally due to uh, Gelfand from 1950 or so, and uh, it, it was one of the guiding principles of the work of Harish Chandra. And before all this happened, this philosophy was already in place. And I want to say a few words about it. Given the limitations of time, maybe that is all that can happen today. So uh, yeah, so in, in some ways, uh, before I say that, I must say that uh, there is some glossary of terms. Glossary of terms. And uh, I must. Uh, so you know, uh, the program, my lectures are about reductive groups, and uh, I will not have much occasion to say what they are, but a good example of a reductive group is GLNFQ, or PGLNFQ, or uh, SLNFQ, or it can be SONFQ, or it can be SP2NFQ, or it can be a unitary group over FQ. And then there are a few more. Only a few are left. They are mostly what I am talking about. So I will often say reductive groups, but uh, for those who don't want to think too much, maybe they can think about GLN. Some others who know GLN very well, they should start thinking about classical group, SON, SP, and unitary groups. Uh, 
So there is the reductive groups. Well, what is of essential importance is taurine. And uh, in some sense, uh, 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 we, we already had some examples of tori here. They are groups like FQ star cross FQ star sitting diagonally. But you know, this word sitting diagonally is a coordinate system, but let's say sitting diagonally for the moment uh, diagonally. Uh, but you know, it could also be FQ square star. That's also a torus, and it could be a product of these also. But it could also be FQ square 1, which is uh, x belonging to FQ square star, such that if, when you take the norm of this to FQ, it is 1. So there is norm 1 elements in FQ star, FQ square star, and I don't think I want to define them too precisely, but a combination of this works. I, I hope you people will have questions to ask in the tutorial because uh, my good friend Shri Prakash will be there to help you. So, you know, tori, I don't think I can define for you, but tori are abelian groups. These are uh, what are called abelian reductive groups. These are yeah, so for reductive groups, uh, abelian groups are called tori. And uh, uh, <clears throat> the other things which already have made their presence is this uh, uh, the uh, concept of a Borel subgroup. Borel subgroups. Uh, so these are uh, to be thought of as upper triangular matrices. Every group has concept of a Borel subgroup. So I think uh, you will have to uh, construct them in some judicious way, but uh, with some careful coordinate and planning, uh, Borel subgroups look like upper triangular matrices. Certainly, this is the case for GLN and SLN and so on. And uh, for these groups, uh, there is a convenient uh, quadratic form and a symplectic form and a Hermitian form, which allows you to think of Borel subgroups as these. Then there are things called parabolic subgroups. <laughs> parabolic subgroups. So these are subgroups which contain Borel contain Borel subgroups, and uh, somehow the parabolics looks like this. These are block diagonal matrices. So these are matrices which are zeros below the blocks, and they are stars here. So these kind of, this is a subgroup in GLN, and this is, uh, contains the upper triangular matrices, and uh, this is a subgroup. These are called parabolic subgroups. So there is a torus. So uh, the hierarchy of the groups is that there is a torus diagonal, which contained in B, which is contained in P, which is contained in G. And somehow uh, the representation theory is going to interplay with all these. And uh, this uh, Borel B is equal to T times, let's say, N. And this P also can be written as M times N. So uh, what you do is that you have this parabolic P, P and uh, you can write this as uh, block uh, diagonal matrices. Zero is there. That's a subgroup. This is called a Levy subgroup of the parabolic times uh, unipotent radical in which uh, on these block diagonals you put identity identity, identity, and you put zeros there, and you put a star. So the parabolic is uh, m times n, this is what I have written, and this is called a Levy decomposition. <coughs> 
Levy decomposition. And uh, oh, one important other detail is that uh, uh, to Torai, there is a concept of a while group. And uh, in some sense, uh, this is a bit of an innocuous group, but uh, somehow it is, uh, it controls the group a lot. So one defines this as normalizer of T upon T. So you have the diagonal matrices, you take the normalizer of diagonal, which is called monomial matrices, only one, zero, one, non-zero in each row and column upon the torus, and uh, is uh, equal isomorphic to symmetric group if uh, G is G L N F Q. For uh, G L N, it is the symmetric group on N symbols. And uh, this is one of the really important uh, groups. So uh, these are the uh, uh, ob these are the objects which will play important role, but uh, somehow th these objects need to be a little bit twisted. So uh, I need to say a few words, twisted, twisted groups. Uh, I think I, I will perhaps uh, need it most for tori. You know, I said that the tori are product of FQ, FQ star, product of FQ star. And I said that has a name split torus, split torus. And then there are more complicated tori which are supposed to be twisted form of that split torus. And uh, 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 for GLN FQ, I have to say that twisted. So maybe uh, groups is not so important, but uh, twisted tori. And the point for GLN FQ is that uh, there are many kinds of tori. For GL2, already we saw that there is the diagonal torus and then there is FQ square star. Both are there, but you know uh, that construction can be done for. Uh, any algebra A, so to say, so where A is a direct sum of Fi, where Fi over Fq are field extensions, field extensions of degree Di, such that uh, summation of di is equal to n. So you take any alge algebra A, which is direct sum of fields, and you look at the invertible element, then that sits inside G L N F Q, and these are all the twisted tori. All the tori are of this form. So this uh, all tori are of this form. And uh, okay, so I will go back to the philosophy of cus forms. So uh, uh, yeah, so I have to define what is a cus form or a cuspidal representation <clears throat> or a cuspidal representation. So you know, uh, I, a representation of GFQ is said to be cuspidal, said to be cuspidal if for all parabolic P equals M times N, <coughs> pi N is zero, where pi n is equal to v belonging to pi such that n times v is equal to v for all n. So these are the fixed vectors under n. Pi n are the fixed vectors in pi under n. 
and uh, a representation is said to be cuspidal if for all parabolics p, so there is a little bit of a caveat here, p not equal to g. Because if p is equal to g, then its uh, n will be a trivial group, and then this is uh, all of pi. So, <clears throat> so this is the definition of a cuspidal cusp form or a cuspidal representation. GFQ means uh, GLN FQ or uh, SP2 and FQ, etc. You know, there is an FQ which is in the notation. So it's the same notation, GFQ. G is a group like GLN. Without putting the field, it is still a, <coughs> it's uh, somehow it has a name, and then you put that FQ. And uh, okay, so this, these are called cuspidal representation, and uh, philosophy of cusp form is the following theorem. So each irreversible representation of GFQ is obtained by parabolic induction, obtained as induction from P to GFQ, PFQ of some representation, let's call it V, where V is a representation of MFQ treated as a representation of PFQ. P equals so what happens is that uh, N is a normal subgroup and uh, P has M as a quotient. So any representation of M can be treated as a representation of P via this natural surjective mapping. And then uh, take a representation V of MFQ, treat it as a representation of PFQ, you do the induction and is obtained as a sub-representation, sub of where V is a cuspidal representation. So this theorem says exactly what I said at some point, that uh, the representation theory of the group G is reduced to understand cuspidal representations of all smaller groups. And here these are not smaller, these are not only smaller groups, but these are smaller group in the sense of being smaller Levy subgroups. So if you understand the smaller Levy subgroups and their cuspidal representations and the cuspidal representation of the full group, then via this uh, induction, this uh, induction is called parabolic induction or called principal series representation. All of them are obtained inside this. And typically this is irreversible, typically this is irreversible, but in some cases it has sub quotients and you need to worry about it. So maybe I end here uh, uh, that uh, there is the notion of a cuspidal representation for a group and all its Levy subgroups and any representation is obtained by induction from a cuspidal representation on a Levy subgroup. <coughs> and if you look at the example of GL2 that I did in the beginning, uh, the principal series obtained by inducing a character on the upper triangular matrices is of that form. A character on GL1, uh, the uh, Borel has uh, Levy, which is product of FQ star cross FQ star and any character there is cuspidal, so you induce that. And uh, then you have to, of course, input cuspidal representation of the full group, and uh, each and every representation of GFQ is obtained by this process. So somehow, uh, this theorem says that as long as you understand cuspidal representation for a group, you are okay. And for GL2FQ, these are the Q minus one dimensional representations. 
which uh, acted as building blocks for somehow all representations for GL2. And now we are saying that if you know such cuspidal for all GLN, then you know all representations for all GLN. So, yeah, I am happy to take questions or anyway, I am here whole day and uh, people are welcome to uh, talk to me or talk to others and uh, thank you. <clears throat> yes, yes, there will be a tutorial. And uh, I hope uh, people can ask questions so that it allows us to also respond to them. Otherwise, uh, you know, the typical thing is that otherwise one just does a theory more. And uh, it should be suited to the interest of the audience by their interest. Yeah, I mean, that will be good. But I just want to encourage the audience that the subject is large and uh, you can look at it from many points of view. I mean, uh, GL2FQ is uh, simplest of the groups, but even in GL2FQ, you can look at GL2 of F2 or GL2 of F3. They are also interesting groups. Or you can look at GL4 of F5. I think uh, somehow there are two parameters, GLN N and FQ, and FQ itself has two parameters, P to the power D. I will perhaps do it tomorrow. For GLN. For GL2, it is Q minus 1. For GLN, it is Q minus 1 into Q square minus 1 up to Q to the power n minus 1 minus 1. So, of, uh, the dimension of the cuspidal representation uh, <coughs> is uh, Q minus 1, Q square minus 1, dot, 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 Q to the power n minus 1 minus 1. So, equals dimension of cuspidal or GLNFQ. And uh, they are parameterized, as I said, by characters on FQ to the power n star. So one knows how many of them are there and uh, which characters give rise to irritable and uh, I, in some sense, I would say that the theory for GLN, you can ask any question and they all have a good and simple answer. All. But as I began in the beginning, even for SN, that is not really the correct statement. And GLN FQ is far more complicated. So I cannot be very truthful, but uh, in some ways, uh, most questions that people can ask can be answered. Yes, yes. So, uh, so, so for each irreducible character, there is a unique M and V up to conjugation such that you yeah, get yeah. this way. Right. Very good point, indeed. So I think uh, there is a uniqueness which is uh, essential that uh, uh, it is uniquely in this form with cuspidal data and uh, uh, right, so it's called the cuspidal support of the representation. So every representation which is not cuspidal has a cuspidal signature on a Levy subgroup. And that Levy subgroup is not unique. Uh, it is unique up to conjugacy. Parabolic is not unique. And there are some small details there. And uh, very good point. <clears throat> 